plaintiff, Joelle McLaurin, says the defendant is her sister. But since their mother was a promiscuous heroin addict, they don't know if they have the same father. So Joelle petitioned for a DNA test. Defendant Terry Collins says as a child, she remembers her father angrily telling her mother that he was not Joelle's father. So Terry does not know what to believe. All rise. This court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Greg Mathis presiding. You may now be seated. Y'all wasting my time. You know, talking about that, talking about, oh, we related. You mean you coming in here? Y'all look just alike. Your mama the same, your daddy the same, your cousin the same, your uncle the same, your aunt the same, your great uncle the same, your great grandfather's the same. My goodness, y'all look just alike. Ain't nothing I different. I want to see you, though. <laughs> We're here to determine whether y'all sisters or share the same father, I believe it is. Let me start with right. you. Well, first of all, it's good to see you. <laughs> and I thank you for letting me be on the show. Thank you for coming. Um, My mother, back in the 70s, the early 70s, was a heroin addict. And, and I want to say no disrespect to my mom, because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be here. But because of her of her heroin addiction she's been promiscuous I would say and we don't know whether or not my my potential father is my father and I'm let me stop today. you first I always like to put things in context particularly with uh, the uh, children of drug addicts and heroin in the 70s uh, heroin in the 70s was being transported back from Vietnam mm -hmm. during the war. The soldiers coming back with heroin addictions in order to numb the pain, both emotionally and physically. And so when they came back home, they were still addicted. And of course, the dope man takes advantage of whoever is the most vulnerable community. And they needed the heroin the most, of course, if you fighting on that front line and they come back addicted and the drug dealers take advantage. A lot of people on heroin in the 70s in my community, it appeared like half the people in Detroit uh, in the projects that I grew up in. It appeared that about half of them. Uh, were on heroin in the early 70s and most of the guys had come back from Vietnam. Uh, so I want to put that in context, all right? Your mother was a victim of what I always refer to as geopolitical drug dealing. So you grew up, your mom was addicted to heroin. Did you all live in the house, same household? No. Okay. But you grew up as of what age knowing e of each other? I've always known I had a sister. Um, so that that wasn't an issue. Okay. It was just my father. Okay. And what was your life like growing up? I know it had to be rough and challenging. Uh, did your grandmother step in? Because your mother was sick, essentially. So who stepped in to help? My aunt, my aunt, my uncle. I, I grew up. I grew up in a pretty decent home. My my uncle worked at GM okay. and retired there. So we, I had. If we had struggles, I didn't know anything about. Good, it. good. All right, yes, protected sir. you all because uh, certainly there were struggles if your mother was addicted to that. Good. Yes, sir. Uh, you give me some background, ma'am. So I did not know my mother um, in her addiction. So I didn't even know my father in his addiction. So I'm not privy to that information. And I'm, I guess I'm kind of glad about that. Um, so I didn't meet my sister until I was 16 and she was eight. And she wanted to meet me because it was her birthday. And so I went down to Detroit and she told me to go home. <laughs> Why? She pulled, my hair. she pulled my hair. She told me to go home because she had a little crush on this guy and he liked me, but she liked him. And so. Um, that sounds like a Detroiter. 
I was eight. You a hater from and Detroit? So, no, sir. Why are you invited there and then gonna play her off when she get there? Pull her hair. I guess, I guess because I wasn't used to having a sister. But I was only eight, Your Honor. That don't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> I was in all kind of devil man at eight in Detroit. <laughs> I, I love my city. Too. I love my city. All right, ma'am. So you went back home. What happened from there? Well, so um, so my sister and I kind of uh, we lost uh, touch, I guess, a little bit, and then we came back together. And um, I ended up in South Carolina. Well, let me just give you some context. When I was about um, eight years old, I knew I saw my mother when she was pregnant with Joyelle. And my dad was very insistent that Joyelle was not his child. I mean, it was a traumatic incident for me because I still remember it very clearly to this day. They had that discussion and, in front of you? Yeah, it was it was very violent. Okay. And um, I had to call for help. So I remember that very vividly. And then um, another incident, I went to see my sister and my brother in South Carolina. This is pretty much after we had started to try to build a, a broken family back together again. And my brother, we were all sitting at the table, laughing, drinking, having a good time. My brother said to my sister, your daddy named Ben. And my sister said to him, well, your daddy is an Indian. As a Native American? Yes. Okay. And for me, as an as a older person, that didn't stick so well with me. And that kind of created doubt along with the traumatic incident. And then this incident, it just started to create doubt. And then also judge the fact that uh, my mother didn't, once Joelle was born, Joelle didn't live with me and my father and neither did my brother. So we were very much separated hmm. and so it's taken a lot of hard work for us to get to a point where we are now. It's not easy, but we're working it out. So I guess we're just to a point now where I think every, we just want to know the truth. Other than the argument where you heard that information, did you ever hear it? Otherwise, I know you said while they were fighting this big incident that they were having, it came out then. Have you heard it since then? Did you ever hear it again? So, no, actually. So, so my family on my father's side raised me along with my grandmother and all of my aunts, right? Mm -hmm. Uncles had a lot of them. And so that was something that was never spoken about. Okay. And so... If if initially they believed Joyelle wasn't my wasn't my dad's child, it was because my dad didn't initially believe. And so when we as as we started to come full circle and she started to come around more often, no one really cares. Right. Because not like true. you said, we look alike. Not true. What's well, not true? It's um, that she's saying no one really cares. The undertones are there. I can feel it. I can feel that they question who my father is. And that's hurtful to you. Yes, it is. Because the question is whether you all have the same father. And then if she's saying you all were kept apart, so suddenly you're coming over, I can see how you could feel uncomfortable. And in fact, you, it might be real or imagined. So yeah. you think that automatically they're going to be only in one and whether I'm in that because that's a question that have not been resolved. And who does all that? The siblings, her other the siblings question. and the entire family? Yes. All right. Yeah. Well, just carry that around with you and show them. Y'all are full wow. sisters. <laughs> have a good day. I love my mama. <laughs> Thank you, Judge. Yeah. Thank you, Judge yeah. Mathis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm, this is where the rubber hits the road. 
Oh, I'm just great. happy that we have closure to this. Mama say so. Dada say so. It's done. <laughs>